Good Friday morning, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk with Keith Smith. Thank you kindly for joining us. A pleasure to connect with you through the I Love Seville Network, where every social media platform known to mankind is airing this show right now. Central Virginia is our audience. Last year, we reached just over 253,000 people through this network, and it's because of content like Real Talk with Keith Smith. Today's show is no exception. We'll go to the studio camera, and Keith is welcome Two fantastic panelists to the show. Uh, maybe one. <laughs> Moselle. <laughs> Moselle. <laughs> maybe one. One fantastic, another, huh? another, no. We uh, love Chris Fanshawe. We love Chris Fanshawe. He's Fanshawe. one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, he's a lot of fun. I we, hear you say that every time, every no, really time. Uh, most of the time I'm lying. This time, <laughs> this time I'm telling the truth. This time I'm telling the truth. Okay, guys, let's get back on track. So I, I, this is exciting. Thank you, Moselle. We've known each other for, God, decades. And... Um, uh, you know, the fact that you've agreed to sit down and talk to us is, is heartwarming, and I'm extremely thankful. But why don't we kick it off a little bit. Uh, for the few people in the world who do not know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself and what your current position is, and, and we'll kick it off from there. How much time do I have? As much <laughs> we, as you want. We, so, so here you go, Moselle. Okay. There's, like I said, there's no only, rules. There's no, okay. Well, there's three rules, uh, but... Right. I'm not going to take a lot of time. It's the most... Um, I am a Fluvanian born and raised in Fluvanna County and left there after finishing high school and went to Virginia Union University and I'm going to tell you the years so that you can see my um, years of, of experience being here on this earth. Mm -hmm. I went, I graduated from high school in 1959, mm. went to Virginia Union, um, married a hometown gentleman who was in the Air Force. Uh, and after that, I taught in Washington, D.C. for a while, moved on to Germany, and we went to Germany, and I ended up teaching in a special needs school, where at that time, the, military, the Air Force did not have a place for special needs kids in the school, so a lady had organized a school on the base, and I ended up taking over as the administrator of that base in 19, uh, then in 69, and I had a son in Germany, I already had a daughter, came back uh, to the United States, worked in California for about a year or two, and then went to Japan for four years. Came back from Japan, and I uh, went to, came home. My husband went to uh, uh, Korea, and I didn't want to go to career. I had lost my father and I wanted to come home and stay with my mother. Uh, I had a contract from Fluvanna County School System mailed to me in Japan and so I went to work at Central Elementary and I taught fourth grade, fifth grade and then I taught all gifted and talented kids. Oh, I was going to say, did you teach Chris gifted, and then, no, I, then you no. said gifted. I, uh, yeah. So, um, so Moselle, I need to yeah. just get, do me a small mm -hmm. favor. Can you just slide a little bit in front of the microphone? Okay. So folks, this way. Can, all right. folks can hear what okay. you're saying. And, and I taught at Central in the fourth grade, fifth grade, and then I went uh, and taught gifted and talented children from, um, we, we, they went into the program at second grade to the sixth grade. And then I was picked up to go to the University of Virginia uh, to do an internship in administration and supervision, and I did that for a year. I had a master's degree from Michigan State uh, from Japan. Japan sent professors over to the Air Force Base, and I took their classes, and I finished it up at UVA. Then I did an internship at Central as a system principal. Then from there, I went into the central <coughs> office, and look, I tell you, I have done everything that there is to do in the school system. I've done with special Other than, other than teach everything. him successfully. Yeah. Right. Only thing, I never hit <laughs> the tried. high school. Um, finally, I was principal in Fluvanna of two schools, Fork Union and Cunningham, for a couple of years. Then Charlottesville recruited me to come and take over Jackson Valle, and I refused it because I had some things I needed to finish in Fluvanna. But they came back the next year, and I did go come to Charlottesville. I taught, I was at Jackson Valley for two years, and then the superintendent called me in and said, Ms. Booker, we would like for you to go to Walker Upper Elementary and think about it. So I went home to my retired military husband, and I said, I don't want to leave Jackson Valley. 
And superintendent asked me to go to Walker, and I knew Walker was having tons of issues. He said, what are you talking about? If he asks you to go, you go. There's no question. Now that's so the I military to, guy. So I went to Walker, and I stayed there nine <clears throat> years. I knew I was going to retire at 59, at the age of 59. So I went to Bern Moran. I retired from Bern Moran, came to Fluvanna. Fluvanna asked me to do a be a liaison between the family and the school. And I said, please, let me take a year off. Then they came back at me the next year. So I did that part-time for 10 years. That way it really helped me to see where the community was, where the children were, what were the needs. I could travel, I could go to homes, I could visit. So I did that. And then, and in the meantime, I ran for the Board of Supervisors. Um, the gentleman that took my husband's place, when my husband retired, he was on the Board of Supervisors for 16 years. And then Mr. Cecil Cobb took his place. And then when he came off, I went on. This is my 16th year on the Board of Supervisors. That's awesome. So four terms. Mm -hmm. It's my last So term. how many years to total was a booker on the board? 32 years. 32 straight or 32 in totality? No, not. There was a 12-year break. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was 30, 32 years. So and we're the only, and we were the only African Americans ever. My husband was the first African American ever elected in Florida County. There you go. So, That's awesome. And I think, mm -hmm. I've never thought about this. Are you all the only married couple that served on the board? You know, I think so. I think we've had grandfathers and our brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I've so. I've never thought about that. That's a great <laughs> trivia question for Central Virginia. Name the yeah. only married couple elected on any board in Central Virginia. Well, in Fluvanna, at least. I don't I, know if I can't think of any in Central Virginia. It might be Virginia, true otherwise. Yeah. Uh, no, and, and I kind of dabble in this world, and I'm sure Neil Williamson is yeah. watching, and Neil uh, is let a, us know. As purveyor of this information. It'd be a cool yeah. fact. And, you know, and right now, you know, I know that it is time for me to venture off and because of so many new things and things that's going on, I just don't have the time or the will or the desire. <laughs> well, maybe it's to, time for you to actually retire because yes. I, I know you well enough right. to know because we've worked together over the years. Mm -hmm. You put a ton of time and effort into it and it's something um, that we talk about on the show all the time. You know, elected officials, you know, really have to put in, you know, a good 30, 40 hours a yes. week to do their job right. Would, Is would that you, how many you're putting in? Chris? Uh, yes, and, and I just said to somebody yesterday, it's literally true. You could put five to ten hours in a week, or you could put sixty in, mm -hmm. and there would be no lack of things to do if if you're putting in sixty. But I mean, hours. to do yeah. the job effectively, you right. you've got to really, in my opinion, you know, it's got to be that twenty thirty yeah. minimum, I would think, and th and that's not counting your board times you guys do, right? That's correct. Yeah, right? reading board packets. And, and I think with Chris being uh, here, you know, born here, lived here, and I did too, but I left. So there's a generation kind of a gap for me. Hmm. When I left, I left a lot of families. And when I came back, I knew maybe last names, but I didn't have the same relationship. So, but so we've Chris got has had a lot. And so you're going to have people approach him, which is a good thing, that can talk to him because they know, you know, that he has, he knows what he's so if, involved if, in. If I can just add that. I yeah, know sure. just be, uh -huh. Like I had lunch yesterday with somebody who's not even a, in my district. They're actually in your uh -huh. district, but uh -huh. used to be in Cunningham right. before the redistricting. And um, um, he's a farmer, and he had questions about taxes and so on. And um, so we had lunch, and through that I learned you know, uh, certain questions about penalties and back taxes, blah, blah, blah. And so, uh, you know, I love yeah. that stuff. And, so. you know, I've been, I don't know where I was yesterday, and all of a sudden I looked at the fields in the Falk unit. We have some beautiful mm. cows. Have you seen those over in Cares Brook? Um, all up through, the, it's, it's one, and I live in the area where Tap Scott has his property. And his fields, when he put, when he plants his corn and his soybeans mm. and things like that, um, you know, it's it's simple, you know, it's beautiful. 
Um, yes, it is. So we're trying to introduce a new thing on the show called a zingo meter. A z you know, the zingers that we do. And, and you guys went on too long. I was trying to get in there. That, oh. yeah, you know, when you said that Chris never left Fulvana County, that's assuming he was there to start with. Right? But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mentally. Yeah. And, mentally is right. what I was talking and, about. Yeah. You know, I just, uh, so we're, we're doing on Fridays um, uh, elected roundtables, right? Um, so today is my home county, Fulvana, and generally we've been, we've been kind of kicking off talking about what everybody talks about this time of the year, which is budget season, right? So we went through the, the tax assess reassessment on it. Uh, we can kind of tackle that a little bit, but guys, ch chime in. Where are we at with the budget process? Mm -hmm. People are really concerned. I have parents i have clients of ours that are concerned that their taxes are going to go through the roof um and not you know not so much rate but actual dollar amount so you know let's have the tough conversation what, what what's the budget season looking like and you guys kick it off however you want to take it if i can digress one second and it's the adhd but moselle and uh, talking about me leaving the county um when i was 13 moselle was one of the chaperones on a uh, trip to Korea, South Korea. Did that, you go to South Korea? The choir trip. Um, yeah, two We were a song and dance weeks. group, and we went there for yeah. two weeks. Now <laughs> you see, yeah. now. I saw now, this coming. Hey, yeah. now, Chris brought that up. Now you see the generation gap. Well, I just can't get past him yeah. dancing in my I'm head. A, right. <laughs> I'm, a gen, I'm a traditionist. Yeah. And you a baby boomer, right? I don't even are know. Are you a baby? I think you I are. I don't know where they put me. Yeah. I well, how old are you? I, 54. Yeah. You're Actually, I think He's you're like just right at the end. Of I think it. you're out of it because I'm just yeah, in it. Yeah. I'm, I'm just in baby boomer. Yeah, so yeah. I think whatever came next, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's. Uh, oh, you're gonna put it on screen? Tell us when it's on screen. I, yeah. We're gonna got a good photo of Chris Fairchild. Yeah. We're gonna show on screen. Yeah. The Chris problem is, is they can't see it. I'll show Moselle. Oh, this is the generations. Okay. Yeah. Here it is. Um, so when were you born, Chris? What Six, year? Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. He's mm -hmm. Gen X. You're Gen. I thought, I thought so. you were Gen X. Gen X. Yeah. Boomers go 46 right. to 64. Right. And I was born in 1941, so I am definitely... You're a you're, uh, silent generation. That's what oh, it's called. Oh, there ain't nothing silent yeah. about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's called. Look and at that little graph. Yeah. Yes. So it goes, wow. boomers start at 46, mm -hmm. 1946. Right. And then we have a father that's watching the screen here who's been in Charlottesville since, uh, for 60 years. He says he remembers you from your time at Walker when yes. his kids were there. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Multiple parents have put on the feed they remember you from Wonderful. Walker. Wonderful. Hard to Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. That's you, good to know. you got a great I reputation loved, in this community. I loved Walker up elementary. And now I sit on boards with my students, and they still think I'm their principal. Really? <laughs> How does that go? Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, they just kind of... Well, she carries know. a heavy gavel. Let's just say that. <laughs> How, what, do you think of, what do you think of public schools today? Oh, you want to talk to me? Sure. Yeah, oh, you're the um, There's a lot of turmoil, and I have a daughter who started teaching here at Greenbrier for 11 years from JMU, um, and went and got married and went to Williamsburg, retired after 36 years last year, taught kindergarten for 35 years, ran for the school board in Williamsburg. So she's on the school board at Williamsburg. That's awesome. So everywhere, when I, I also meet with the high school um, principal, I'm the uh, education chair for the NAACP, and we uh, support the schools and to work with the families to try to get messages out on things that's going on. And I met, we met with them last week. There's a lot of, um, up unrest in the school system since the COVID. There are a lot of behavioral issues. Um, kids, especially at the high school, is vaping in the bathroom. I think that's the, it's a big issue, not only in Fluvanna, but everywhere. Like everywhere. Yeah. Um, so we've got to really put a great deal of effort and we need more and more staff. Right now we need behavioral specialists in schools with kids as young as kindergarten. Um, so schools have got to re-evaluate and go about things differently than when I came along. Yeah, we had problems and so forth, but I could take a child home, I could go into the home, I could talk to the parent, they could work with me. And now 
sometimes that doesn't happen because parents have so many other things on their plate. But that skill and talent that you just talked about, and, and Chris, jump in here, mm -hmm. you brought that to the board, right? This is, by the way, your second rodeo as a chairperson, right? You, yes. This, you were a chairperson mm -hmm. yeah, prior to. Yeah, two years. And maybe, maybe the first female African-American Mm -hmm. yeah. in, in this, I, I don't maybe not in the state, but definitely yeah, state. in Fulvana, right. Fulvana County, mm -hmm. for sure on that end of it. So, so you know, let's get let's rally back to the mm -hmm. budget and let's rally okay. back because this is your board, right? Yes. You know, wh where are we at with the process and what kind of leadership skills that you just outlined are you bringing to help our county move through yeah. the next step? Yeah, I'm a I am an educator, um, and the school board brought their budget to us on Wednesday, and it's a big ask, and it... Um, what kind of increase year over year? It, well, last year, we, we did the, we financed the total budget, which was a million something, I can't tell you exact. They're asking 2.6 million. So eight cents, basically? Mm -hmm. Basically eight That's cents. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yes. And, and be, eight and, cents based on... The old, yeah. and, the oldest right. reassessed rate or the new one? The new volume. Oh, new. Yeah. As if, as if we were where we were. Right. If, if we didn't reassess, they'd be adding eight cents. Got it. So it's the old, right. it's the old value. After, after um, equalization. Yeah. After the equalization. And, and they've done a, a salary study, and they did it in-house. And when they looked at it, they found that we were the lowest in almost every category. So they were trying to bring salaries up plus new positions and I couldn't tell you everything that's in it but it's 2.6 and it's going to be tough of how we're going to get it down to reasonable I can't see us funding 2.6 unless somebody just comes in here and drops us big millions of dollars in addition yeah. to that we're funding for the first time uh, in-house EMS in Fluvanna County. Mm -hmm. um, so talk about that for a second. So we're actually we're actually uh, uh, hiring paid EMS. Is that is that what we're doing? Yeah, you know, we've for years it was just volunteer, and then we were paying a contractor mm -hmm. to give a percentage of the coverage, and then in December the board voted that uh, at the end of the term of that contract. Um, or let's say by the end of that, the term of that contract, we'll have paid EMS staff in Fluvanna County. And on top of that, um, there are some, it is in the works and, and could be somewhat uh, at a similar time coming on that um, of bringing on paid fire. But, you know, just like we're all struggling to get employees, um, they're struggling to get volunteers. And it just comes down to a point where you know, government, in my mind, has one responsibility first and foremost, and that's public safety. And so, um, you know, we're going to... It sounds like it's going to be hard to equalize this year. It will not be We're equalized not. this year. Yeah, that I can see. I, it, it's going to take a whole lot of cutting in other places. Yeah, to equalize. So, 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 so the folks who who are watching that may not under, know or or, un, or 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 understand the term equalization. Somebody jump in and say, what does that actually mean? What does that mean to me as a Fulvana citizen equalization to my, to my yeah. tax that I pay? Yeah, well, we did a, a reassessment, mm -hmm. and you, you get your uh, reassessment, and it went, people's reassessment went up. Mm -hmm. And so if it went up 10 or 13 um, percent, and then you, you try to equal that out, and I think ours was, what, 77 77 point something. And we were 87 right. last year. Yeah. Right. So, so, so if we were to hit equalization, mm -hmm. the amount of money I pay each year cash out would be approximately the same if we hit equalization. Yeah. Does that sound mm -hmm. about right? Right. Yeah. So the, yeah. Look, the concept is, is if the values go up, um, the tax rate goes down. And so they go down to, mm -hmm. an, to a level that, not necessarily per person, but to the county's total revenue, uh, it equalizes what the county is bringing in in revenue. That's, though, just a baseline, because then the government, as we're in now, we equalize and then we could raise or lower taxes. Mm -hmm. So, but that based on the budget, though, right? Because right. the budget starts the going budget, up, right? 
or it goes down. Yeah. Yeah. And and the budget down. that Eric gave us was 81. Yeah. It so Eric Dahl is the county and, administrator. I'm sorry. Yeah, Eric Dahl. The budget that he put was 81, and it last the last budget season it was 88.5, right? 87, it was 87. 87. Yeah. So we're working with that, and we we don't we don't put the school budget in to the last minute. That's if we could get the school budget. I don't know if we ever can. As long as I've been there, the school budget was always wedged in, and then at the end we saw what we could do. I remember times when I was in the early part when I was supervisor, we would go to the fund balance and get six hundred thousand dollars and finish the budget out and help the school like we I don't think we've ever done that for but maybe recently. So you're saying you would mm -hmm. take you have excess in the yeah. in the balance, you mm -hmm. would use it to go do that. Yeah. But while we're on the schools, um and, and I don't know the exact percentage of it, but a large percentage of the school budget is not funded by lo local tax dollars. Is that right. correct? It's right. state. It's mostly funded by, by the state. State and a little bit from the federal, not a whole lot. So what is your largest line item in your budget? Is it the schools? Schools. Yes. And then the second largest? Staff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Government. Em employees, people? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yes. So we get on this show quite a bit. Folks are concerned, right? Yes. I'll paint the picture of my parents, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're retirees, retired New York City firemen um, on, a, on a fixed uh, income based on the late 80s is when he retired on that end of it. And between taxes, the cash that they're paying going out and cost of living and all that stuff, you know, there's serious, cons we're blessed. There's consideration of them coming and live with us because they can't afford to where they're at. I mean, they're running out. They're, they're out, you know, the conversation that we always have, I'm out living my money, mm -hmm. right? I understand. On, the, on that end of it. Um, so how can we help folks like that in tax season-wise? Excuse me, well, uh, we, budget you season. You know, we do have um, help for people who... Tax relief. Back, yeah, tax relief. The um, problem with that, and Moselle, that and I don't mean to push Revenue back. Revenue does that. But, yeah, but the, it doesn't hit your parents. Yes, but the thing is, is they have too much asset, mm -hmm. right? So once you factor, I think it's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I may be wrong. Yeah, yeah, I may I be mixing my jurisdictions, yeah. jurisdictions up. But their home is worth more than that, which automatically kicks them out, right? Yes. They're of a certain age, right? Mm -hmm. right? But their at their val their asset right. value uh, kicks them out. And I've often wondered why we have not either retooled that so we can help the ones that that need it? Right. Now, I think that that has been changed. I mean, the um, criteria was changed a little bit, and that's up to our Commissioner Revenue to do that. And we, you know, we can tell exactly how much that we are doing the rebatement for. Got it. How much money is into that. I, you know, economic development is the, is the only, is the answer for us to, in order to get more tax money into the economic county. development you mean attracting new businesses yes. to drive incremental revenue yes yeah. yes that is how's the how's the county responding to that do do oh, folks want that kind of development well i think that we what we did was we have a development in every district in my district fork union we have an area kent store palmar but the main one is um Lake Monticello, when I you should say Zion's Crossroads. Zion's Crossroads really Zion's Crossroads. Crossroad. And so Lake Monticello is the housing <clears throat> residential is just booming. Um, and people are, a lot of people are concerned. So let's talk about that. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got a couple slides in front of us. Um, Judy, if you don't mind, slide eight. Um, you got a lot of Fluvanna County watching right now. You also got a TV station locally, the one right down the street watching the show. Um, you get props from John Blair and Stanton, the town attorney and the acting um, city manager and Stanton six, watching Fluvanna, the show right now. Eddie Shiflett has given uh, Chris props. Eddie Shiflett said there's a lot of caring people right there on set that love Fluvanna County. Here. And same about him. He's the uh, rescue uh, chief for Lake Monticello. He's giving you guys love. Dusty Christian, hey, Dusty. giving you love. Brittany Becky. Gray, giving you props. Hey, girl. Um, 
Gary Hockett has got something that he wants to talk with the, about the county and handicap accessibility. We'll get to that, Gary. Good. First, uh, Keith, the slides, my friend. Yeah, so um, just let's just talk about value, right? Um, uh, so it's, the, uh, it's on the screen, slide number six. It's in your package. I gave it to you. But just a quick analysis of it. We're 822 value now. This is how much the median sales price um, uh, and this, I'm focusing on Lake Monticello for the moment, guys, on this slide. And the reason I do that, uh, and I do it repetitively on the show, it's a real good litmus test. It's 43, 4,400 homes, right? It's, it's an easy thing for uh, a, a Marine that can count the three, the handle, right? I'm with you. Yeah, <laughs> on it. But so Lake Monticello, the value went up 18% year over year from 21 to 22. So the median sales price in 22 was $318,000. So that you know, in 2017, the median sales price was 195. So in six years, it's jumped up $123,000 and 39% in value. That being said, if you guys take a look at slide number five, this is, this is the number of units sold. We actually had 2022, 22% um, was actually less sold over 21. So we're selling less homes, but we're selling them at a higher value. And just to add, just before you get your guys' opinion and thoughts on it, looking at what's available right now at this very moment at Lake Monticello, I take out new construction because it skews numbers. Uh, 11 homes for sale. Oof. Only one is below $375,000. And what's the days on market on that one? So the one days on market is 84. I know that particular home, I talk about it on the show all the time. There's six things that are required to make real estate happen. Location, price, features, condition, timing, and who's on the other side matters. Uh, I know that home, it, it, it needs a little help on the features and the conditions on the end of it. But the median, so that you know right now, the medium days on market for active as we stand right now is one day. So that takes out all the high-end stuff, the low-end stuff. One day, and the cheapest home you can buy at Lake Monticello today is 253500 bucks. So where's my teacher's going to go? Where's my cop's going to go? Where's my fireman going to go? So and I just want to... Nurses. Nurses. Rescue. I just, I just rescue. We're hiring... We're hiring, uh, you know, rescue folks. Um, we had uh, Jesse Rutherford sitting in here. I gave a pr this presentation to his board last, at the end of the beginning of this week. And he shocked me because their teachers in Nelson County are leaving Nelson County to go buy homes. They're going to Amelia County and towards Lynchburg and traveling an hour, an hour and a half to go to Nelson County to teach, which I've never heard before the other night. So. I get it, uh, but where wh where are these firemen or or rescue folks going to live? Because they're not going to make enough money to buy a three hundred seventy five thousand dollars house. Well, reality is, um, plenty of teachers, <clears throat> um, people who do those jobs in uh, other municipalities, do live in Fluvanna County. So it's, it's yeah. we don't have to be completely hypothetical about it. Um, they're there. Because they're yeah. like working in yeah. Charlottesville, well, making right. double the salary, right? And well, then, not necessarily. Yeah. We, we, we reviewed what others make, EMS and uh, fire. Um, when we went into that, there's, it's not necessarily that much of a, a wage difference. Um, people, my point is people who are making similar incomes um, are already living in Fluvanna County successfully. Um, you know, I think it's, I think it's 46.5, and I'm not saying this is good money for what they do, but I think it's 46.5 that, um, that a new deputy comes on in Fluvanna County. It just seems like there's no time ago at all that it was something like 33. Um, a new teacher is, I think, somewhere around 50. Um, you know, but I get phone it, it's, it's not great money. But there are people living there. There are people renting. There are people that, you know, if the median is that, that means there are homes that are less. Um, I certainly lived a substantial part of my life in homes that were um, less than the median and with a less than median income. So yeah, Lake, Mo Lake Monticello, what's available ranges from 254 to 8, 865. You got a Fluvanna so teacher watching now, Keith Brown. 
Set. Keith no Brown will. says, I'm stuck in my small home because of the cost to buy a newer home that's large enough for my family. Teacher salaries do not allow us to buy new homes. He's a Fluvanna right. teacher. And these, and 80% of the teachers are, are Fluvannian. <coughs> um, that's a high percentage. Living, living I, I, yeah. like, I hear him. I'm here, hearing what he's saying. So we, so we say people want to be here, their family's here, they have a rate, like some of them, they, but they do want to progress. They do want to, they're in their first home. They want to get a larger home. Um, I hear him. Um, well, I get I get these phone calls because of what I do for a living. Yes, I, I I'm a teacher in Fulvana. My right. my my husband or my wife or my partner is a nurse. You know, the medium area income which we have to use HUD sets. We don't set it. Is one hundred and eleven thousand dollars for our county. You know, and at eighty percent AMI with two folks working, they're either gonna they're, they're just not gonna be able to right. afford it. So I have a little <laughs> success that I want to talk about. And he's just sitting right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if it's okay, my grandson and, and daughter came in to say hello. Yes. Harry, do you want to say hi? Hello. Come hey there. Hello. hello. Oh. We're just hanging out talking. Oh. We're just talking about you. With that say, nice smile. Say hello to that. Say hello to that. Are you four? Okay. You're four? How old are you? Four years old. Look at old. this. Look four? at this, you're not talking. I Why are you not you? talking? Yeah, not I have talking. a four-year-old granddaughter <laughs> I'd like for you to meet her name. Oh, no, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> fixing, no fixing, no, no, no oh, being a yenta. Uh, you're on the show, big man. I see you. <laughs> Can you say hi, Harry? Hi. Hey, hi. Harry. What's your name? Harry Tyson. Harry Tyson. Like <laughs> so I, I need you. We're gonna finish the conversation. I need you to give me a kiss on my cheek. Give me a kiss. Tell me you love oh, me. Oh, that's good. Tell he me you love me. Talk, but he kisses <laughs> Keith. <What? laughs> Stay away from him. Look at look at me. Look at me. Stay away from him. We'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. All right. I love you, sweetheart. Have, have a good day. Uh, bye, Harry. Bye. 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 <laughs> now, now, now you want to talk? Yes, me didn't get on camera. You know, you, you, how many do you have? Great Five. kids. Five. That's Five. Awesome. Yeah. Moselle? I have four. I have, mm -hmm, 25, 21, 19, and four. Any, oh. any great, great grandkids? No. Mm -mm. So that's three. That's my, my parents' third great grandkid. Moselle, and you're going to love this. There's folks that are watching the show mm -hmm. that said not only did you teach their children, but your daughter taught their children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is so great. My daughter, I love this. Yes, my daughters taught families. They said your daughters taught our kids. Multiple people are putting that on yeah. the feed right now. That's awesome. Oh, isn't it though? Oh, it's legacy. Great. That is legacy. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what that is. Yes. Um, Keith, this is, this is to your point. This is from uh, a fluco, Brittany Gray, who you help with your campaign. Yep. Um, she said the majority of teachers in Fluvanna that own homes, they're two income households. Very rarely can a single income teacher afford it here in Fluvanna. And I would also imagine, and I'll throw it to you guys and get out of the way, that the inventory that's pinched in Charlottesville City and Almaro County, we have no inventory, and it's extremely expensive. That's going to mean even more folks from Charlottesville and Almaro looking at Fluvanna to buy real estate and homes because of how close in proximity Fluvanna is to Charlottesville and Yeah, Certainly putting yes. pressure on us. Putting right. pressure on Fluvanna. Definitely. Right. I had a meeting um, yesterday yeah. with the Flu uh, Albemarle uh, Police Foundation. Um, and they wanted to sit down with me as the chairperson of the land trust and figure out what we can do to help their police officers. And that's the exact conversation that we had. There's police officers and and nurses together. They can't they can't live in Fulvana. They can't live in in Albemarle. They can't live in Charlottesville. And for them, it's difficult because they're supposed to live in Albemarle County, right? They need to be in the county that they're in. And we were trying to figure out a way that we can help. Mm -hmm help those folks stay in these jurisdictions on that end of it. And, you know, I, I put a lot of my time and volunteer time and effort into this. And I just love to know, other than what we're doing, I'm trying to do, what possible solutions that we have out there for folks? Yeah. Let, yeah. From your Go perspective. Ahead, okay. Yeah, love to hear it. Did you just call me Keith? Oh, God. Good Lord, Moselle. Um, You're okay, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you need a hug? Uh, need no, a hug? No, 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 thanks. <laughs> 
Um, so, you know, when we, when, I think when I was here last, we talked about a teacher you knew in the county who husband had passed and yeah. she had been a teacher for quite some mm -hmm. time and so mm -hmm. wondering what we do. And so I thought about that a good bit after. You know, there's some things that government isn't supposed to do. And if she has a decent amount of tenure, let's say she's making $60,000 a year. I don't know. And somebody that's making $60,000 a year, I'm not saying it's breaking the bank, but um, the average scenario where somebody's making $60,000 is isn't, in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of most Americans, that's not a scenario where government should be saying, what do we do? And, um, you know, can you and I, over a coffee or a beer, talk about what do we do? Well, that's much of what America does to help people in tough situations. In addition, and, and I don't know this person's scenario, you know, life insurance is very important. Most of us, I mean, I could barely afford much else, and I had life insurance because I knew that I could get hit by a truck. And I, Yona keeps on raising it and feeding me more steak. I don't understand why. Yeah, yeah, and she and I talk more. <laughs> okay, and, got uh, it, got it. Um, but it, it's... I don't know what their situation so where was, government, that's why you, that's So where government can help. Let, yeah, let me um, tell you a situation. Uh, we're, we're building the Colonial Circle over there next to Effort, and it is going to have, um, we don't call it affordable housing, we call it work. So, so yeah, I, I housing, use the word housing affordability. Housing affordability. Uh, that's what I use. But it's 125 and, right. apartments. And it's going to, it won't be ready brought in a couple of years. No, I, no, ma'am. They, okay, they, they got fast. the foundations in the ground. I, they, yeah, they're mm -hmm. moving. I have a, a rental cottage on my property. I had a young mother with two, two boys, and she rented my cottage. She got a, she had, she was doing health care and she, her client passed. So she ended up working in the women's prison. So I went to her and I said, young lady, you need your own home. You need to make an investment. I pushed her out of that rental, told her to go to Habitat. She went to Habitat because I knew Habitat was going to put her in the right place. She were going to get her credit score up. They were going to get her out of debt if she was in debt. They were going to save money for her to do her closing costs, and eventually she would have a home. Mm -hmm. And she moved into, and Fluvanna Louisa built her a home. I'm on that board. And I said, I've got a young lady. I need her to make some progress. So they built her a home. It's a small home. You know how Habitat homes are, but it's three mm -hmm. bedrooms and nice. It's over there in Houch Houchins mm -hmm. Place. Mm -hmm. So she went in there, and now she's a homeowner. She's paying her mortgage, and now she can get to a position. She want to get a larger home. That's a starter. But mm -hmm. what, when we put them in these apartments, they, we need to be building a, some way that they can <laughs> With, can leave these apartments and have their own home. That I don't know how we can do. But so is, I, that, is that the role of government, though? Just throwing for the sake of a cop, sake of a talk show. Not in my opinion. opinion. Um, no, I'm not talking. I'm leaving. I'm not talking about government. I'm talking about her own self effort. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether she's getting any help. Is it government because? Louise and Fluvanna built her a house affordable. Sure. Is that government? Yes. It's government, but that's what these that's what they are doing. Because Fluvanna and Louise and Housing get their money from the state, they get grants, and that is what it's for. I don't know how you cut I don't know how you cut so, government out. So I'd you, rather see them do that than you, me. So when, when we say government, I, I, yeah. I just want to be clear. I am not in support of government solving the problem. Right. But it's part of the problem, mm. and it needs to help solve yep. the problem. 25% of new construction cost is pure local, federal, and state regulatory requirements. So on a $400,000 home, hundred grand, just because I'm simple for my brain, $100,000 of that is uh, regulatory red tape. red tape. 
So mm. one of the things government can do is turn red tape into green tape. We talk mm. about this all the time. Or get rid of the tape. I would love that. Yeah. If they cut it in half, yeah. that's 50, you know, that's 50 grand plus. Yeah, government, government doesn't, to turn that into green tape, they have to get rid of something else that they're already spending it on because not just going and filling the coffers, or they have to add more tape. So, acres at Lake Monticello, you guys know I developed that. Mm -hmm. By the time I put it on the contract, rezoned it, got a site plan. Market put a, changed. Put a bulldozer, no, no, this is my first one. This was in 97. When I put a bulldozer on the job site, it took me six months. Colonial Circle, I helped, the, I helped that client to go through that. It took six years. You're a business guy. What does that cost? A ton of money. Yeah. On a market changes, as those at the table know, we Yona and I got caught up in that, lost seventeen million dollars, everything we had, because it took so long, the market changed. The market changed on it. I'm not saying the government should be responsible for that, without a doubt, right? Yeah. On on that end of it. But um, you know, not that this is about me, but I won a no, national. It's about you. It's about me. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. I won a national award, right? Because I work around the country, trying to help this situation. So uh, I'm going to get on my soapbox a little bit. Um, so there's a thing called the Regional Housing Partnership, which we're going to give a presentation to your board soon. And it's built on what I call the four pillars of of healthy housing system or of housing affordability. It involves the government for-profits, non-profits, and the people who we serve. And all those three need to be at the table to make it work. And the reason I know it works, um, the land trust, which I chair, was able within about 12 to 14 months, by putting those relationships together, built 23 homes and put 23 affordable housing buyers in there, all cops, firemen, teachers, in Albemarle County. In they all were cops, fire, or teachers? Yeah, yeah I've, I've got, I don't have it with me, but they were all pretty much, they were, they were averaging 65% AMI, area medium income. They were all service-related folks. There may be one or two that sure. wasn't out of that. But, but for the most part, that's what it was, and it, and it worked. So to your comment about the government, they are gov Albemarle County only did two things for us. They gave us $625,000, which I turned into $8 million. So their a return on their investment was huge. And they cut their red tape down. And they said, okay, we're going to help you facilitate this instead of putting up roadblocks and all this stuff. And we were able to do that in about 12 to 14 months. And oh, by the way, so that you know, that $625,000 will give forever because that $625,000, we retain ownership of the land, will constantly give to other affordable housing bars. So government is part of the problem. Government yes. needs to help. It is not the solution. So, well, one, it, we can't have these conversations without mentioning um, COVID happened. So all the world went crazy. Every financial aspect went crazy during COVID. So um, we can look at your charts and see what happened. Oh, yeah. COVID. Oh, yeah. And so, um, as we know, Virtually every market has corrections, and there's going to be a correction. So we can't act as if this is uh, just another step in time. Um, at See, least so you're saying the housing market's going to go down? Is yes, that what you're saying? absolutely. Yeah, I disagree. I mean, you say it's going down. It will go down. I mean, look at what happened to interest rates recently. Um, you know, those things lead to... Um, yeah, I mean, the market corrects itself. The stock market is... is uh, a roller coaster. Um, so we, we can't act as if this is not an anomaly. And, um, you know, m much of what we're talking about when I was a young man coming out of high school, and, you know, now the median income in Fluvanna County is 20 some dollars an hour, if you, if you break it down hourly. So I remember coming out of high school here and then a guy was making seven bucks an hour at uh, that was big bunny. It was then Virginia Power. I was like, wow. And then I heard that a, um, a supervisor was making 18 grand, and, I, and he's about to retire. He, you know, he'd spent his whole life to get to 18 grand. I was thinking, good Lord, what do you do with that kind of money? 
And, you know, yeah, it was a long time ago, but we've more than, you know, we've more than tripled what that guy was making working as a lineman at Dominion. And um, we're making in Fluvanna County an average income that's more than triple um, on, uh, uh, minimum wage. And so there's always been so much of this that's true. And certain people make decisions in their life of what their career is going to be and what they choose as their priorities. And God bless people who make all different uh, decisions. And, you know, be it on Long Island or Fluvanna or Los Angeles, there's firefighters, teachers, carpenters making or, or, or living in, you know, three-bedroom homes that um, With five are 1,300 square feet. And 900, been, 950 square feet, five kids. Been there, done that. Yeah, that's what you were raised in. You're been saying, there. Been, called 1,000 square feet. Been there, done that. Five kids. Dar Dad was working three jobs. Mom was working on the side. Yeah. I got sent to go work out in high school to make money for the family. I get all that. But, you know, I know people who um, went, came out of high school and went into Dominion, Bepco plant, and right now a lot of them are very well off because they took advantage of the investment that Dominion offered them. And they were probably making seven dollars and some th th throwing coal, coal in the in the yeah. thing, but they a lot of them took advantage of of uh, investing and. They're doing very well Amen. today. Mm -hmm. I, I could, and, and you absolutely know I love you with all my heart and soul. I could not, you could not be more wrong about prices going backwards on houses. We, we've discussed this on here before. You guys, and, you uh, guys we, agree we, to disagree. We're going to agree yeah, yeah, to disagree. Yeah. We're going to agree to yeah. disagree on that. Uh, we do have some folks putting in the feed that the inventory is so tight that they don't see the prices going down. But to Chris's point, we've seen corrections in every market. It's, and the housing market, to Chris's point, has been on fire for a very long period of time. I've got a 21-year running sheet for our county, yeah. right? That is the the year-over-year -year average is 5.5 percent increase. It includes a time of great unpleasantness, which I know all too well. You know all too yeah. well. You helped me through it emotionally through it. We weren't running together. I don't know what I would have done. So I love you for it. Back at you. But um, it's it's going to. Uh, if you hang on long enough, it'll appreciate over, yeah. over time. But if we get back to the budget. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry <laughs> Madam Chairman, Chairperson, um, excuse me. We have a budget. We meet every Wednesday. So we will be meeting at 5.30 on the 22nd in the Morris Room. And, How long um, do those meetings take? Um, we use, do we have a time limit? I don't know what the time the, limit is. The budget early. part is typically somewhere around an hour and a half to two hours, depending on if we have to go to closed right. session. Just yeah. like with the schools, that was a big meaty subject, you know, $22 million or whatever. Mm -hmm. So even that we got, that was five to something like a quarter or seven or so. And it just depends on how many yeah. stakeholders and, you have in front of yeah. you. Can people and, join via Zoom for your meetings? Yes. Yes. Great, thank and, you. And the heartbreaking thing is trying to decide what to give the school, and then they have to go back and cut. And Virginia cut is a unique things. state because mm -hmm. it has two separate bodies. Some, yes. like you mentioned, Long Island, they're generally they're all one. They're one tax rate. They're one. They have actually I take that back to two separate scenarios. It says a tax for school, and there's a tax tax for for property. I'd like to see that. Then then people. I bet understand. the average the average citizen doesn't know no. that the largest and this isn't good, bad, or indifferent. It's fact. The average citizen, I'll bet you, doesn't know that the largest line item in the budget is schools. Yeah, and that's the reason I asked you the question because I wanted to get it out there. I yeah. think that, they that's do. The, I, I bet you they don't. No, I bet they, you they, they don't. Yeah. The average citizen. No. Oh, the what is the average citizen? <laughs> uh -oh. So, so I, I agree a thousand percent. I think we should we should have two separate. Taxes, two separate rates. You you do have two separate boards. I right? think that's a brilliant know, idea, right there. Right, yeah. but if yeah, I, what states have that? Well, I know and New York how does. The, how do they? How does because that's work? I know Connecticut does. And I, know. I heard. Mm -hmm. I recently heard that Georgia but, does. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not unprecedented. Yeah, but it's we a need lot of, to, I think yeah. we need to do some research and find out where the boogie bird, but, because it, um, I, I'm not disagreeing, 
but um, I would like to see how that works. But we are a Dillon rural state, yeah, right. say, so, so, so yeah. that, that is going to be very difficult. Most of these states that we're listing off are home rule states, right? So a Dillon rule, it, it's going to have to come from the legislature down, from the delegates. down to you guys. Yeah, um, comments coming in fast and furious. So you got Eddie. Eddie's given a, a comment here. As the chief of Lake Monticello Rescue Squad, it is fantastic to have a board that is willing to sit down and listen. And this board cares and go. they're willing to listen. Thank you. The rescue Thank you. squad right there. Thank Dusty you. Christian giving them props. Kevin Hensley giving you props. Three media outlets watching you guys on the show right now. The mayor of McIntyre, Bill McChesney, said he even worked with. Is Jerome your husband? Yes. Oh, he said wow. he knew mm -hmm. Jerome and helped um, Jerome with the kitchen remodel at the historic New Fork Baptist Church. Yes. <laughs> so multiple folks know the um, know your family very very well. Um, Woody Fincham, who's a Lake Monticello resident and an appraiser, he says sixty thousand a year is not much money for this area if you have kids and normal expenses. Right. Um, and you know I'm inclined to agree. agree there as a father and, and a husband of two. It's not, uh, the, it's not the cheapest area to live in. It's a, it's a wealthy area. Yeah, but but I, you travel the country, right? Mm -hmm. Where is it not? Where is this not a problem? I mean, you've, you've got I businesses know, know. all over the country. Where is house, lack of affordable housing or the lack of inventory? And, that, and we are nationwide about 5 million units short. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm kind of going back, I mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. we're not in... The prices are not going to come back. It's just supply and demand, right? It's yeah. just simple. The buyer pool is 20 feet deep, and the inventory pool is the kitty, the kitty pool. Let, let me ask you, how can and, and I don't, and I, it, it's a stretch to draw lines between it, but how can you not have trucks that were bought two years ago that are suddenly worth more? Oh my God. New. Mm. I mean, worth, worth more oh, use than they were when they're new. What happened there? You, you couldn't get a camper. Yeah. You couldn't get a boat. Yeah. If, and, and I looked at a boat uh, last February. It was a third more than it was um, 10 months before that. And then you had to place your order. You waited a year before it went on assembly line, meaning you didn't even get it in a year. How can you have the market where you have those realities? You couldn't get a washer and dryer whether you went to Lowe's or Home Depot because they just weren't available. How can those things what be is true, the, but housing is insulated from so, them? So here's my short answer to that. What do those things do year over year? What do, you do on your, what do you do on your taxes with trucks and stuff like that every year? It's, a D, it's a D word. You depreciate them. I'm sorry, I'm noticing somebody's going in. It's, you uh, depre depreciate. You, you yeah. depreciate. Housing appreciates. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. Housing is always appreciated. You also had these ups and downs, right? It depends on where you hit it in the cycle. But the little synopsis that you just talked about was unprecedented, right? Right. Right. It is all unprecedented. It is all unprecedented. But typically, you can go run 20, 30, 72 years, whatever it is, on big picture. Housing always appreciates, right? Mm -hmm. You know. The, and, and go back again. What'd you say? Seventeen what million dollars. Uh, what depreciates? Vehicles depreciate. Right. And what happened? Vehicles appreciated. And then now they back down again. Right. So it mm -hmm. tells you that there's an anomaly in the market. They typically depreciate, and suddenly they're they're going up in value. But you're just comparing like you're comparing a car to a house. I'm comparing the economy. Yeah. Okay. And I like to get as back Jerry to the would budget. say, we're going to we're going to agree to <laughs> disagree. Yeah, back to the budget. We have, we we have a lot of fluvannians, so now I'm going to get back to the uh -oh. budget. Um, when you look at the school budget, <laughs> you look at the fact that, and it's not only Fluvanna, but, I, I, but Fluvanna is who I represent. We can't find psychologists, counselors, people are not going into teaching. Um, our children have the greatest need right now. I'm a humanist, and people is what I look at, and I'm not, I don't look at, well, how much it's going to cost or whatever it is. I began with, here are people who one of these days, these students may be in the nursing home taking care of me, or maybe my doctor, or whatever it is. These, we're talking about human beings and, and kids who are coming through our system. I think it is, we need to give them the best. Now, I'm not saying you got to go out, we got to fund 2.6 budget. I'm not saying that. 
but we need to realize how important education is for Fluvanna County. Um, our people get an education, they go off to college, and a lot of them don't come back to Fluvanna County mm -hmm. to serve their community because, for number one, we don't pay enough or um, they don't have anywhere to live. But education is our biggest expense, but in my eyesight, it is the most important thing along with rescue. When we talk about what, what do we do as supervisors, it's education, human services, safety, those are the things, and welfare of our community. That's what we are looking at. And at the time I've been on the board, I mean, years ago, when, when Jerome and the Rundle, they had to borrow money in order to, to, to get what they needed. What to year take. was that? He, he was on there in um, 80, I believe. Really? Uh, yeah, he was on six, up to 90, 96 when he got off. But they used to stay and work with the budget like 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. We don't have to do that. We haven't done that. Yeah, we, but have, we, we have yeah. more resources now. Um, so the budget is real important. And I know that Fluvanna County, and I, I pay taxes too. And we always, I think we look out for the taxpayers. Yeah. And we, we, we really work at it. Ned Galloway said in this. And, and some people can't pay their taxes, and our treasurer will have a, a system to help them pay a little bit at a time. Um, so Ned Galloway, Albemarle County Board of Supervisors, I think at the time he was the chairperson uh, on that, sat here, and I've said it numerous times, if you really want to know how somebody's going to vote in the rest of the year, watch them during bud budget season. Budget season is the most important time of the year for boards mm -hmm. and councils. Is you And you should follow Neil Williamson and, and Sean Tubbs. They're doing great job, great work on that stuff. But if you can attend, attend and watch these meetings and you will tell how your county is going to run from that point forward because the decisions that your board makes on how to allocate money is going to pretty much telegraph how you guys are going to run. I, I see that while I'd also say it, it could be very different. So I always say about local government, um, I was I served one year, 2011, on the Board of Supervisors. We redistricted it. It was my seat that went away. And as soon as I was off that seat, I uh, kind of coined a saying, we'll never vote on abortion in Fluvanna. And my point was, it's not so much, most of the year it's not so much Democrat or Republican. Most of what you're dealing with is, I mean, you talk, you can go to the uh, Democratic Party meeting or the Republican Party meeting, you can get just as many people who say, I'm concerned about how much residential growth we're having or, or whatever, on the other side of that, whatever. And so my point is, yes, that's true. Budget time is a little, maybe sometimes you can see a fiscal mentality come out a little more. The rest of the year is really not very conservative or liberal. I've, I, I've, I've said this more than once. I've always thought local politics should be devoid of party. I think, you know, we, because you guys really don't function that way. And oh, by the way, all politics is local. Yeah. Local politics is what matters and why we talk about it so much. At least I do. I talk about it so much on that. And, you know, one of the things I'm passionate about what I do for a living and do this three times a, a week with Jerry across the, the seat from me because we get to help somebody with one of the three essentials that is required for a trip around the earth. Food, clothing, and shelter, right? Mm -hmm. You need one of those, you need to have all those three things to really have a successful trip around around the earth. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, for the sake of a talk show, I'm kind of pushing a little bit on, on that a little bit, but I honestly... I trip around the sun. Yeah, that's what I meant, yeah. the yeah. sun. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for keeping me straight. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and he knew it too. Was, yeah, <laughs> well, I think we all knew it. I was like, what is he saying here? What is um, he saying? You, yeah. know, you know, years ago when this uh, school easy. budget was up, parents and the community came out to talk to us. They came to listen. Of course, now some of them listen on Zoom and etc. But they would come and make comment. We, I don't remember in the last few years that we have had 
people to come forward and help us make those decisions and kind of understand um, the challenge that we have. And I would love to see more people coming out. And, and what online. time is your typical meetings that you do now, that? Now, this one is 530 in the Morris room. Yes, yeah, so. I know, I know 7 o'clock is, do we do, talk about it at 7? We Usually typically do it early, early, and then we go to closed session and then deal with local matters right. such as development. You're right. Or Maybe we seven. need to do so it. So the at average eight time. parent, they're would, not. Yeah, they got to come home, to get, get dinner, get the, the kids. You know, the two. But it's yeah. also it's also hard because, for example, Wednesday night, a very big item for um, a community a community in Fluvanna was a commercial, mm -hmm. uh, uh, an industrial business industrial. coming in, and those people also after seven o'clock want to be there to have a voice mm -hmm. to sure. listen to it of what's going on on zoom i'm not sure that we can find it and you know that section of the meeting went to 12 15 you know 12 12 15 in the right. morning um yeah. so and we and we used to have strong ptos and the pto presidents would come i remember sitting in a courthouse and the pto presidents would come forward to support the the budget and represent families um, well, I understand very well the amount of time and energy it takes you to it takes board members to do this. So, on a personal level, I just want to say thank you as a Flavanian uh, with a funny accent. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to say thank you because I know how much time and energy it takes to represent represent us. And well, thank you, and thank you, genuinely, thank you for electing me because I love it. I mean, I, I, it has some. Oh, well, you think I voted for you, huh? No, no, no. I, <laughs> that was to the microphone. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um, for those who know, he, he's my formal, we're my representative. You're in my district. Chris, you yeah. have the opportunity to stay on the board until you're my age. I don't know if I'll stay on it till 2026. <laughs> <laughs> um, huh? I, I enjoy it. You know, uh, I, I love it. I know you, you know, do. As you do. It's community mm -hmm. service and you get to affect. But what I love about it is um, but what Grant I, Tate, a, yeah, a yeah. friend of yeah, uh, Grant. three mm -hmm. of us. He taught me early on um, that there's a difference between management and leadership. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, that has stuck with me right. for many years. And I'm a visionary by nature. And you know, I'm always thinking out here, it's, it's part of ADHD, I think. But um, so I love being able to affect what we look like, what mm -hmm. we feel like 10 years out mm -hmm. or 20. So Chris, the first time you were on was kind of just, you know, one year, didn't really get a chance to get a lot of feet up underneath you. You're into your second year term mm -hmm. of, of your first term. What have you learned now that you did not know when you started? So in other words, you know, what, is there, is any thinkings changed? Is this something that you walked in on the first day thinking, okay, this is the way I, this, I wanted to approach the subject, it doesn't matter what it is. Has that changed a little bit? What, how has this affected you? I'd say it's less a big bite item than it is small bites. Um, an example, um, I, I made a comment Wednesday night about, well, I wouldn't have voted for rezoning X. And then boy, shortly after, it occurred to me that the other four people sitting beside me voted for X before I was on the board. And I thought, well, I should have not only phrased that differently, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't have coming in Is front of me. Is that when you apologize? And it's when you accept it. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, well, that's what I'm trying to get at, right? You know, ha has been in on the, being on the board for the last year and some odd months uh, affected the way you're approaching things? Or? Yes. In, in Moselle, just to give another great example of her leadership, in the first meeting, um, Moselle said, Chris, I'm on CPMT, Community Policy Management Team. And you know that that fits so much into my background and so on. And she knows that years ago I was on that committee. And although she wanted to stay on it, Moselle, uh, what is it, gave the olive branch or something and said, hey, but if you'd like to, because you know the first meetings when you assign which committees and so on. She said, but if you'd like to have it, then, um, then I'll step down. And as God is my witness, as small of a thing as that seems like, that was monumental to me. And I've, uh, it uh -huh. was, it set, it was a tone setter. So even that first meeting, you know, um, I, I started learning. Thank you for sharing, because I was 
trying to get you to say that to, to get out and talk about that and so you know your your mindset has maybe changed a little bit from from day one and you're a very inclusive guy anyway I know you well enough to say that but um, the, the fact that uh, that you said that publicly is, is speaks to your yeah. character and I appreciate that he's uh, a gen Y X. Uh, no, he's X. an X. He's an X. I'm I'm already, I forget. Okay, I have to go yeah. back home and study. That. <laughs> yeah. You're um, going to go home and get a tattoo in yeah. the back of your head yeah. with a big X. I appreciate yeah. the fact that he digs, he vets things. And she, yeah, she recently he, told me that's yeah. my um, Chrisism. Chrisism? We, should, we need to vet this. Yeah. So, so that's should, that's I, uh, should a supervisor vote their district or vote their, Ooh, their county? Question. Yes. Question. All the above? Should, is you, a mean, supervisor, what, you mean what are they considering when they vote? Is, is a supervisor more responsible to voters in their respective districts or voters in the county in totality? I tried to, and it ended up, I, I heard the other night when we voted again on this industrial business that said, uh, the person said they didn't get a response from the board, whether it's in my district or somebody else's. I tend to try yes, to communicate yeah. and... Um, County. And again, last yesterday the, the lunch that I had was with somebody who's mm -hmm. not in my district. Mm -hmm. I, it's yeah, no, it's county. Have, yeah, it's you know, county. Here's a good example. Um, at a I was at a planning oriented thing last night in the county, and our uh, planning director was showing how traffic comes in on 619 Slaughter's Ford Road into Route 53 in the morning, and then goes back to that in the evening, and it's going to end up needing probably a roundabout. Well, that's over near Lake Monticello. Most people don't realize that in Fork Union, a mass of that traffic is coming from the Fork Union area, that far corner of the county, with this being right in the center, mm -hmm. because it's quicker yes. to take the back roads, get to 53, and go to work in Charlottesville than it is 15 to 64. The reason I say that is that it's all linked. It's all, all one. That roundabout puts 16,000 cars a day through. Yeah. Uh, that that roundabout. You're, you're saying up at Colonial. Up at Colonial, Colonial. Circle, all the way after yeah. Baptist on the intersection of 618 wow. and 53. And and so if you have development in Fork Union, good, bad, or indifferent, it's going to affect people driving to work mm -hmm. from Lake Monticello right. anymore. Yeah. Or the people that can't afford to live in Charlottesville come out to Lake Monticello. That's also going to increase that. Or increase. the people that live in Keswick, like yours truly, seeing all that traffic coming down right in front of my neighborhood. From our county. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I would, I would argue that most of the traffic on my neck of the woods of Albemarle County, which is right next to y'all's county, is Fluvanians coming into town. And it's going to be more. Oh, it's going to yeah. be more, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I'm trying to affect that. So are you trying to diminish it, the traffic? Yes. I, well, you can never diminish it. Uh, I'm trying to diminish the growth of it. Manage the growth strategically. Manage, yes, correct. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, Moselle, 16 years on the board from day one to now. What big aha moments have, have you had on the board that, that you can impart on our friend, Mr. Fairchild? Good aha uh, uh -huh or bad? Uh, How about both? Both. Yes. Both. both. Yeah. Great, great question. Both. Oh, my goodness. I think I've had more... Um, good things to happen. I don't ever remember a time when I would regret or begrudge having to go to the meeting because I like the people I serve with. I had a couple of years when um, some of our supervisors decided to cut the school $1.2 million. That was not a good time. But um, I had, but I never, I became a couple of those board members that did that, one of them just ended up a very good friend of mine because we talked to each other. And he apologized that he went in that direction, got caught up. And um, that was a real troubling time. But other than that, I have, I have learned a lot. It has made me um, read more. It has made me... Um, broaden my interests, um, get more information, get a little bit more in technology. I'm not where I should be, but right now it's too oh, late uh, to gain it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so and, you know, it's, it, 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 has been, it has been good. I wouldn't be on here for 16 years if it wasn't. 
but I know that it is my time that I need to leave. I need so, to so have you're saying someone you're not younger. I need, yeah, but I have made an official announcement. I have not yet. Okay. But someone younger than, than I am need to be with some, some different energy, um, bringing in some different um, ideas. Need to sit there. I don't. So there's don't one word there. that you both use repetitively. Do you know what that word is? In the, both of your responses out there, was one word that you repetitively used, and I actually count. I was counting it. Yeah. You can't count <laughs> anyway. Know. Serve. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. this is not a job. This is not whatever you get paid. Mm -hmm. It's service. It's about giving back to others. And oh, by the way, when you talk to all the other elected officials, regardless of their stripes, you know what party they are, what position they are, they all use that one word. Mm -hmm. It's about service and about service. giving back to others. You know, so uh, the, the, the I was in a group uh, a few nights ago. One of the things I said. And let's just say some people had made comments at or toward board members that were less than what they should be. And um, respectfully to some of them, I said, you know what? I'm a volunteer too. I, I'm here because I care. The, the money that I make from doing this is, it, it doesn't go to me. I'll just, I'll just say that um, by my choice. And um, so I'm here serving too. So unless... I would go to a, a baseball coach, a youth baseball coach, and say, hey, here's, I'm telling you, here's what I want. Or you better change this. Or walk into a firehouse and say, I don't like it like this. Next time I come back, I need it to be different. Who the heck is going to listen to me? And so it's, yes, service is, it's, it's a caring thing that has a lot of commitment. And I don't, I'm not looking for a pat on the back to it. I'm just saying there's a lot of different type of, people serving their community. So is civility back in the discussion or is everybody back in their corners still? Are, yeah. we, are we able to have a, com a, a, a civil conversation of opposing views on it and actually walk out and hug each other and yes, go have a beer? we do, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. And I think the majority, mm -hmm. Me too. even at the, mm -hmm. at the national level, is that. It's just the small, the small uh, minority of folks that get anger or angry and bitter. They're just loud and vocal. And, and they, that's not the majority. Yeah. Without a doubt. And that's why what we do here in this long format, I think, is so important. Um, you know, if you, oh, I'm sorry, if you look at the whatever the media thing you want to watch, and to me it's not media, it's entertainment on it, um, that's where the divisiveness is. It's really, I do not see it at the yes. local level. Uh, when um, John Warner, the year he was retiring, I was blessed to be with the group. Um, sitting with them up on Capitol Hill just for a, a short session and um, somebody asked what, what has, what's the biggest thing that has changed since you began and he said when used to be when we'd get out of session we'd all go to one of the local bars mm -hmm. we'd have drinks we'd argue, we'd pat each other on the back, we'd talk about what's up with your daughter and we'd wake up the next morning going, boy, we shouldn't do that again tonight. <laughs> yeah. And then they'd do it again tonight. And he said he Sounds regretted great. that that is gone, that that um, doesn't at, exist. At the federal them. level. Yeah. But I think at the local level, that's not the case. There's a board member that, that the bar's still open when it's over. He had out and he may have sat here with you. Uh, right? Tony Bryant. <laughs> Tony Bryant. <Ryan. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, we yeah. love you, Tony. We love you, Tony. And, and Moselle's commented that she wished there was a bar on that side of Fork Union so we could do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I bet you can get some shine in that neck of the county. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I wouldn't know where. Yeah, well, no, that would be an outright lie, sir. I've, that's the first, I've known you for 30 something years. That's the first lie you ever told me. It's a diversion. That's a diversion. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're, 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 you know, we're, we're at over, uh, over 11.30. I would just personally want to say thank you, unless we've got some questions from the Multiple feed. people are saying, Chelsea, Christine, we appreciate you both. You guys mean the world to the county. We're so grateful for you here in Fluvanna. I mean, multiple right. comments like thank this you. on the feed from folks. Um, just giving you guys some love. Um, Heather Hatfield, right. Marty Lynn, Kevin Hensley, mm -hmm. Arlene Viviani. Love them all. Um, mm -hmm. All giving you props on the show. 
How about, uh, Moselle, we'll start with you. How about some closing thoughts for all the Flucos watching the program right now? Anywhere you want to go. Anywhere. Huh? Well, Flucos, um, we, right now we're at the, a very important time for the counties with the budget. And I just wanted to let you know that we're going to do our homework and we're going to do our best to make this budget work so that it's not a burden great burden to the citizens of this county. Thank you all for listening in and for your kind comments. I love Fluvanna County and I love what I do. So thank you. You can tell. We can tell that you love it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Bobby Hensley giving you guys some props and some love. First Fairchild, show is yours, sir. First thing I'm going to say, um, You'll remember that I didn't talk this nice to Tony, so I'm not being fake about it. <laughs> it's not just niceties. Um, you know, I've, I have had the chance to serve with a, a true matriarch of Fluvanna County. And um, the experience and background, and Moselle and I have talked about a lot of stuff from present to uh, what Fluvanna was like 40 years ago, 40, 50 years ago. And, um, you know, um, that will be a part of whether I'm on the board for four years or uh, 16 years, that will be a part of me. And um, so it's, it's, that's been a blessing. To um, the rest of Fluvanna, it also occurs to me sitting here with Moselle that although we're a generation apart that we equally love Fluvanna County, genuinely love Fluvanna County, Amen. like in a passionate way. Yes. And um, you know, our perspectives are sometimes different, but boy, if that's what you have is a, a common mm -hmm. mentality and a common approach. Um, that's a great foundation. It's, that's a, so it's a great fun. foundation. Yeah. And, and, and it also, you don't want everybody on a board that thinks the same way. No. Because mm -hmm. if you do. It's kind of like a marriage, right? Yeah. yeah. It'd be boring. It right. Well, I mean, people aren't going to get served mm -hmm. on yeah. both sides. So, um, yeah, just blessed to be a part. Uh, yeah. Harry, your father is watching. He oh. says, hi, baby boy. He puts him in the feed. He's giving you some props. That's your daddy. Can you say hi to your daddy? Hi, daddy. Oh, I, as a dad of a four-year-old, you just made your father's day. That made my day. You just made your dad's day. Yeah. 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 Well, thank well, I'm going to let him wrap me, wrap, mm -hmm. do my wrap-up. Uh, Probably do it better. They're going to do it better? You want to say thank you, everybody? Say thank, thank you, everybody. Oh, <laughs> yeah. right. Good, buddy. Adorable. Um, Love you Love guys both. Show. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for you serving too. serving our county. Um, it meant the world to me to have you you guys here. We t bust each other's chops, but I'm not, you know I have absolutely nothing but love for you, Moselle. As you That's know, a highlight of my career. Right, <laughs> <laughs> but thank so. thank you for serving us. Thank you for being here, and thank you for uh, taking the time out to do this and serving us. Ma Mandy you. Hoy, Flucos appreciate this board. Uh, so many people giving you guys love. Um, for the folks that are asking um, in Fluvanna where they can watch the interview in totality, go to realtalkwithkeefsmith.com and you can find the interview from start to finish. I see uh, a couple of the media outlets asking this question as well. We'll archive the show on realtalkwithkeefsmith.com. For Moselle Booker, Chris Fairchild, and Keith Smith. And Harry. My name is Jerry Miller and Harry Tyson. <laughs> Harry. Absolutely. Harry, Harry Tyson Jr., is that what it is? Harry T. Harry T. Keith. Uh, Keith. Harry Keith. Harry Keith. Tyson. I love it. I love it. Um, thank you guys for watching the program. The I Love Seville show is up in about 50 minutes. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Great work, guys. It's warming up a little bit. I have Fluco as well. Oh, oh I, remember. I know it. I graduated. So did my sister. What year did you graduate? I was 2004. Oh, okay. So you and Hunter were saying.